What makes a good exam question? Or more importantly, what makes a bad exam question? There are a variety of factors which we're going to explore here today. But before we talk about exam questions, let's quickly get the nomenclature out of the way. The terms we use for the anatomy of a question are stem, which is the actual question itself, options, or the possible answers, the key, which is the correct answer, and then all of the wrong options are known as distractors. Now that the terminology is out the way, let's look at some actual examples. Why is this not a good multiple choice question? First, let's reflect on what this question is actually testing. Is it the student's ability to remember dates or the history, as C indicates? Is that even helpful? Or is it to help the students find subjective statements to indicate their agreement with our own position? which B suggests. This question, or STEM, is too vague. But moreover, the options test multiple potential learning objectives. So how could we rephrase it? Consider this reworked example. You can pause the video now if you wish. What elements make it clearer? Where is there still room for improvement? Feel free to note your suggestions in the discussion forum down below. But based on the short example, can you think of a few guidelines for creating good multiple choice questions? Feel free to pause the video here again and note your own suggestions in the discussion forum. Here are some of our guidelines for making great closed questions. First and foremost, the student should be able to give the answer without even looking at the alternatives. That's only possible if the question is clear and concise. If they have to see the list of options in order to get it right, your question needs work. Second, phrase the STEM as an actual question. This sounds self-evident, but we see a lot of statements rather than questions. If you want a statement type, consider using the true or false question type. Likewise, if you want students to fill in a blank, then use that question type. We also want you to phrase the STEMs positively, where possible, of course, to avoid the which one of these is not the correct answer. Next, Check your questions are pitched at the right level. Essentially, align your learning objectives. If your goal is for them to evaluate something, but your multiple choice question asks them to regurgitate knowledge, then that is deeply misaligned. And speaking of learning objectives, only test one of these at a time in your multiple choice questions. Then use reasonable alternative options in your multiple choice questions. Don't waste students' times with ones that are obviously wrong. Lastly, MCQs are not a language test, so avoid trying to differentiate the options by creating semantic differences that are ambiguous. Now let's look at a few more examples. Why is this not a good multiple choice question? It tests multiple learning outcomes. Plus, what are we even testing? Moreover, you can't actually answer the question by looking at the STEM. So here's an alternative to this question albeit a boring one. It tests one outcome at a time. This brings up another important point. When dealing with numbers or dates in MCQs, order the numbers from small to large, especially when you are listing large numbers. This is also a good idea if you list one word answers in alphabetical order, as it prevents cognitive overload. The purpose again is not to test if the students can spot the correct answer, but if they actually know the correct one. But what about open questions? Do similar guidelines apply? For these, first check that the question and the model answer are aligned. This might sound obvious, but after developing the model answer, read the question again just to check that you are asking exactly what you expect the students to answer. It's very easy to include information in the model answer that is not solicited by the question. This happens when you have an idea in your head of what you want, but you don't actually prompt the students to give you that specific information. Next, give clear instructions. The students should know exactly what they need to do to get full marks, and what full marks actually means in this context. So let's consider this example. What makes it good or bad? Pause the video now to think about it. Compare it to this version. Can you see the difference? By breaking the question into two components, you are certain that students can reflect on their knowledge about both aspects, and the points are clearly indicated. So to sum it all up, give clear instructions at the desired level of learning, 
indicate how long the answer should be, whether it's one paragraph or two pages. Then indicate how the full points can be earned, for example, providing a diagram. This prevents good students from losing points by not seeing what you think are obvious steps. Moreover, you have less work grading essay-like answers if you give students a clear layout for the answers. Otherwise, there'll be students writing entire books just to make sure they get some unknown number of points for the question. Give enough guidelines for the students to spend a realistic amount of time relative to the amount of points that they're actually going to earn. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing your comments.